Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue our discussion of how to represent data and we're going to talk about scatter plots and trend lines. So we're going to learn how to create and interpret scatter plots and we're also going to use trend lines to make predictions. Let's get some of these definitions underway first. So a scatter plot is basically just a graph with points plotted on it to show a relationship between two sets of data. So this is a possible relationship. So when you plot two different sets of data, sometimes they're correlated. So as one goes up, the other goes up, or as one goes down, the other goes down. But sometimes they're not. And a scatter plot can be a good way to visualize whether this is happening or not. So a scatter plot looks something like this. We'd have a normal graph and then just a bunch of points here and there to represent our data. All right, let's do one more definition. Another part of today's lesson is about correlation and whether two sets of data are correlated or not. So a correlation describes a relationship between data. And here are the three different types of correlation we're going to be looking at. We have positive correlation, negative correlation, and no correlation. So with positive correlation, we might see a scatter plot where both variables are moving upwards. So as the x's increase, our y's increase. And you see this, this sort of moving up in that general direction. With the negative correlation, as x increases, y is decreasing. So we see this sort of downward shift here. That's a negative correlation. And with no correlation, it means as x moves up, there's no telling where y is going to go. So we can't predict if y is going to go upwards or downwards as x goes on. So this kind of looks like a big mess. There's no trend. All right, let's do some problems with these. So in problem number one, we're given a table that shows the number of cookies left in a jar after the time that they were baked. So in our table, we have one row dedicated to the time since they were baked in days, and we have one row dedicated to cookies and the number of cookies that are in the jar. So we want to create a scatter plot out of this. So the first thing we're going to do is label our axes and our whole graph. So we have to figure out what's going to go on each axis. So Usually, time goes on the x-axis, so I'm going to put it down here. So I have time, and I'll label this time in days since they were baked. On my y-axis, I'm going to put the number of cookies left in the jar. So I'll put number of cookies here. And if you want to be precise, you can say number of cookies in the jar. So now, I've also numbered my axes. I've had my y-axis go up by fours so that I have enough. It's always good to look at your table and discover like where you want your graph to go. And I have my time in days going up by one since we only really reach four days in our table. So now we're ready to graph this. So with the scatter plot, all you have to do is plot each point as if it's an ordered pair. So with my first point here, this will be 1, 24. On the first day, there were 24 cookies. So this is up here, 124. And after two days have gone by, there are 16 cookies. So that's going to be 2, 16. And you might get the idea here. 2, and then I'm going to go up to 16. And 3 and 10. So that's 3. 10 is going to be halfway between 8 and 12. And then at four days, when four days have passed, there are seven cookies left. So that's almost eight up here. All right. There we have our scatter plot. In part B, we're asked to describe the correlation between our two variables on this, on this graph. So thinking back to what we know about correlation, it's either going to be positive, negative, or there's going to be no correlation. So what do we have here? Well, as x increases, so as we go on in days, what happens to the y values? Well, you can see here that as we go, as we go on, our y values get smaller. So we have this kind of downward trend. This means our correlation is negative. So we're going to write negative correlation. All right, let's talk about the second part of this lesson, which is about trend lines. In problem number two, 
We're given a scatter plot that represents the total amount of money collected after a fundraiser where they sell wrapping paper. So on our x-axis, we have the number of rolls of wrapping paper sold, and on the y-axis, we have how much money we've collected. So our question is based on this relationship shown in our scatter plot, predict how much money will be collected when 175 rolls have been sold. So you can see on this graph, we don't have a point that corresponds with 175 rolls. So we're gonna predict that. And the way we're gonna do this is to draw a trend line. So we're gonna draw a trend line here. And a trend line is basically just a line that has roughly the same number of points, so data points, points here, above and below it. So what they want us to do is draw a line that basically best fits this, these points on this graph. So we're gonna draw a line as best we can, and it's best to use a ruler for this, straight through these points. And this line tells us the general trend of where this graph is going. So we can use it to help us predict how much money we're gonna raise when we sell 175 rolls. So we have to locate 175 on our graph, which is right here. And then I'm gonna go up to my trend line, which tells me my Y value right here, which is 1200. So using our trend line, we can predict that after we sell 175 rolls, we will have raised $1,200. So the answer to this is 1200. All right. I wanna mention one more thing. The trend lines that we talk about are strictly straight lines, but there are certain scatter plots where you can best fit a parabola, so a quadratic function, or an exponential function to fit your data. We're not going to be talking about those, but you will see them again in Algebra 2. I just wanted to give you that little sneak peek to let you know that this is not where this kind of statistical analysis ends. Thanks for watching, and I hope you try those problems at the bottom of your guided notes.